A mustachy old man spoke in an afterlife voice about an excellent book about cultivation, as well as animal spirits in another world, where there are ancient costumes and animal girls. This mustachy old man said the last word with a strong joy in his voice, and then reported that this book is called Bestiary of Beauty. Looking at the candid cover of this book, an excited young man in a nervous voice told this mustachy old salesman that he was looking for a reference book on drawing people and animals. The sly mustachy old man broke into a wide smile and continued to wave the book in front of the young man's eyes, assuring him that this book has a cool plot and lively emotions. The mustachy old seller also noticed that such good books are now a real rarity. Finally, this man noticed that everyone who took this book about beauties with an animal form was satisfied. The young man immediately blushed and held out his phone with the payment of that very book. The young man himself averted his gaze at this time and pretended to be a saint, asking again that there was a whole collection of animals in this book, on the phone, where the young man was paying. There was also a question about whether the man understood this hint, to which the mustachioed salesman's gaze lit up with joy when he began to respond with consent. Thrusting the book into the young man's backpack, the man said that it was a book with images of people and animals. Then, continuing to stuff the book, the man in a low voice said that the author of this book had just left, but the man would give it to the young man just like that. The excited young man nervously asked if it was true. After a certain period of time, the young man returned home and abruptly slammed the door to his room, simultaneously taking that very book out of his bag. The blushing young man noisily put this book on the table, thinking to himself that today, at the age of 18, this young man is going to do something important in life. Holding his breath, the young man, whose name, as it turned out, was Lin Zin, and he turns 18, began to try to open that very book with trembling hands. However, after a few moments, Lin Zin's hands were already shaking violently, and the young man himself wondered why this book did not open. Straining harder, Lin Zin slowly began to open the book, from which bright streams of light were oozing. Opening the book, Lin Zin heard women's voices, which said that after 1,300 years, the faithful slaves of the young man finally waited for Mr. Lin Zin. Seeing the joyful beautiful girls who called Lin Zin the emperor, the young man swam with joy and shock. Lin Zin's eyes lit up with complete delight, and thin trickles of reddish liquid flowed from his nose as the young man began to shout about what an amazing picture book it was. Suddenly, hands appeared from the pages of the book, which immediately grabbed Lin Zin frightened and covered with drops of cold sweat, and began to pull him inside the book. Lin Zin tensed up and started shouting a question about what nonsense was going on. However, after just one second, only Lin Zin's legs were sticking out of the book, and a moment later the young man was completely sucked into the book. Once in a completely unknown place, Lin Zin screamed in horror that he just wanted to look at the girls. After some time, Lin Zin heard the loud croaking of frogs. Opening his eyes slightly, Lin Zin saw a large stone stain with red liquid. After opening his eyes completely, Lin Zin shook his head from side to side, looking around and wondering aloud where the young man is now and where he got to. Rubbing his head with the palm of his hand, Lin Zin felt a strong pain. Then the young man looked at his reflection in the river and realized that it was not his body. Lin Zin wondered if he had been reborn. Suddenly, Lin Zin had a sharp realization that he still had the memories of the original owner of this body. Lin Zin began to sort through the memories of the past owner of this body and learned that in this world, people use spiritual beasts to absorb the spiritual energy of heaven and earth for cultivation. The original owner of the body, Lin Zin, could not afford to buy a spiritual beast for cultivation. Lin Zin immediately realized that the young man had the same name as this original owner of the body. Lin Zin also learned from Lin Zin's past memories that all that guy could do was climb the wall every day in order to steal some food. That past Lin Zin took a whole 20 years to buy a spiritual beast for himself. The new Lin Zin also found out that just a few minutes ago that old Lin Zin ran into the mayor's son. After overhearing his conversation, old Lin Zin found out that the mayor's son wanted to drug his classmate. After catching the young man, the mayor's son ordered his men to arrest Lin Zin, but Lin Zin escaped from them and disappeared on the outskirts of the city. However, in the end, Lin Zin slipped on the river, hit his head on the same stone and died. Realizing the whole story, the new Lin Zin sighed in horror and began to pick his nose with his little finger, wondering how the original owner of this body was able to live up to his years. Lin Zin sighed and thought that life is pain. Suddenly, Lin Zin heard someone's voice asking the young man if it wasn't so sad. This voice began to notice that these young people not only have the same names, but Lin Zin and Lin Zin themselves are similar. It was the voice of the book that brought Lin Zin here to the best Shuri of beauties. The bookish voice continued to notice that not only did they have the same names and similar looks, but the rebirth into the body of that old Lin Zin would have the least effect on the young man, thanks to the new Lin Zin. The young man, hearing all this, tensed in horror, and then nervously pushed the book aside with his foot, shouting the question that Lin Zin really got into a horror book. 
Lin Xin shouted at this narrator, asking him about what exactly he had brought the young man here. The voice from the book in flight shouted in response that he did it without malicious intent. Suddenly, Lin Xin heard the screams of the young master's servants, who were informing the others that they had found Lin Xin. The young man immediately tensed up and cursed to himself, thinking that these servants were as persistent as dogs. Lin Xin realized that he was definitely finished now. At the same moment, the cunning book returned to Lin Xin and informed him that the young man could not escape from these servants, so he should better conclude a contract with this book. An irritated and nervous Lin Xin assessed the situation, looking around. The book also reported that Lin Xin would be able to use the beast girl to kill these servants, realizing that those servants were approaching him. Lin Xin was covered with drops of cold sweat due to fear and began to shout, asking the book to tell how the young man to conclude a contract. The book formed a bright palm image on its cover and calmly informed Lin Xin that everything was simple, since a young man just needed to put his palm to this image. Coming closer and closer, the servants began to smile viciously, intending to kill Lin Xin right now. Lin Xin tensed even more in horror, and then shouted that he didn't care about it, since the young man had no other choice anyway. After these words, Lin Xin slapped that book hard on the cover with his palm, that she even blushed and sighed in love from this kind of feeling. Suddenly, everything around lit up with a bright light. Lin Xin immediately heard an eerie voice telling the young man that Lin Xin had made a contract with the immortal sacred body, and now the contract was signed. While the fast servants shouted orders to the others to hack Lin Xin, the young man shouted questions about the immortal's body and continued to beat that book in every possible way, which continued to sigh from interesting sensations. The servants did not see this book and were rather surprised by Lin Xin's behavior. Suddenly blushing and pleased, the book announced that the contract had been concluded. Then the book announced that it was time to draw the first animal girl. Lin Xin was screaming at the book in a panic, telling him to draw this beast girl faster. Suddenly there was a fiery explosion. Immediately after that, the book congratulated Lin Xin on the fact that the young man had received an ancient spiritual beast. Namely, the Phoenix of Fiery Chaos. Feeling the flames burning his back behind him, Lin Xin froze and turned around nervously. The young man immediately saw in front of him a beautiful girl named Jai Qi, who, after all, is the Phoenix of Fiery Chaos. Jai Qi looked coquettishly at Lin Xin and called him in a sweet voice, calling him master. The servants of the mayor's son immediately froze in surprise. One of them asked in surprise that it was a spiritual beast, and then said that, apparently, Jai Qi has great potential. The second young man suggested that this girl named Jai Qi must have been stolen and not yet trained. The third servant smiled happily and invited the other servants to catch Jai Qi and present her to their young master. Jai Qi lowered her gaze and said about how noisy it was. Uttering the last words, Jai Qi sharply attacked those with a powerful flow of her fiery energy. Lin Xin tensed up and was covered with drops of cold sweat due to fear, while showing Jai Qi a thumbs-up gesture with both hands. Lin Xin continued to stare at Jai Qi in surprise, meanwhile, wondering if she had really dealt with everyone with just one blow. While one of these servants was running away screaming for help, the phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Qi approached Lin Xin and coquettishly addressed him as a master, informing him that Jai Qi had finally waited for him. Lin Xin opened his mouth in shock and blushed. Then the young man began to slowly step back, simultaneously asking Jai Qi about why they shouldn't kill that guy first, to which Jai Qi sweetly gasped and said that they would talk about this later. While saying this, Jai Qi knocked the screaming red Lin Xin onto the grass and began to approach him, saying that Jai Qi just wanted to ask her master Lin Xin to do something with her. Realizing what this beast girl wanted from him, Lin Xin nervously thought that he was not sure that he could fulfill this request. Jai Qi replied that Lin Xin was the reincarnation of the demon emperor, and Jai Qi herself was his concubine. After these words, a blushing Jai Qi approached Lin Xin and forced the young man to bury himself right in her chest. Lin Xin immediately blushed terribly and froze, being in a strong shock. Jai Qi continued to tell her master Lin Xin that the demon race was in danger and needed the young man to take matters into his own hands. Lin Xin abruptly broke away from Jai Qi's embrace and staggered back a decent distance, shouting loudly at Jai Qi to wait. Then, blushing and very embarrassed, Lin Xin began to assure the beast girl named Jai Qi that he was just an ordinary person. Lin Xin was screaming out of shock, asking Jai Qi about how he could be a demon lord. To which the flirtatious Jai Qi, continuing to sit on the grass, said in a languid voice that the fact that Mr. Lin Xin can open this book is already an indisputable proof. Jai Qi said in a confident voice that only the emperor can open the book with the beast maiden. Making a sad expression on her face, the phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Qi firmly replied that there could be no mistake. Taking off her shoe from her foot, Jai Qi asked her master Lin Xin in a sad voice that did he really think that the phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Qi was not worthy of the emperor's favor. Lin Xin, at this time, was thinking hard. 
The lustful little devil in Lin Zin's head said that it was his gift to him, so why did the young man refuse? To which the angel of wisdom assured Lin Zin that the young man did not need it. While Lin Zin himself rubbed his chin thoughtfully, the lustful little devil's eyes turned into hearts when he began to remind him that the phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Qi had already offered something. So if Lin Zin continued to insist, then they would succeed with Jai Qi. Suddenly, Lin Zin wondered to himself whether he was a man or not. After all, and immediately after that, the young man stood up in a strange pose and beckoned Jai Qi with his index finger, inviting her to begin. Hearing this, the phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Qi immediately pounced on Lin Zin and knocked the young man to the grass. When Jai Qi pressed Lin Zin's hands above his head to the grass, the young man averted his confused gaze and asked Jai Qi in a nervous voice to be gentle since this is Lin Zin's first time. However, suddenly the same book appeared, which loudly shouted that now was not the time for this, and then with a fiery flow of energy returned Jai Qi to its rightful place in this book. Lin Zin immediately viciously grabbed the book with his own hands and began to crumple it, shouting that he had almost succeeded. Lin Zin angrily asked this book about what that paper fool had done, to which the book began to shout loudly, asking the young man to let him go, because the book saved Lin Zin's life. Lin Zin immediately froze and asked the book about it. Then Lin Xin began to poke his index finger at the cover of the book with the words that Lin Xin would poke at him until he died. The book blushed again in embarrassment and began to sigh contentedly, asking Lin Xin about what he was doing because his fingers. The source of all power in this world is called energy. The human race uses spiritual beasts to absorb the energies of heaven and earth and further transform it into true Kai. The immortal body can absorb energy anywhere and anytime without needing beasts. In addition, it is also possible to alternately transfer energy to the beast maidens through a very interesting process. The book also explained to Lin Zin that the young man had just arrived here, and Lin Zin's reserves were now almost at zero. The book also revealed that spiritual beasts have a much higher energy requirement than Lin Zin's current energy absorption rate. The book summed up his words by saying that if Lin Zin did something interesting with a spiritual beast now, he would simply die of exhaustion. Hearing this, Lin Xin froze in horror, even turning slightly blue. Lin Xin then thought aloud about collecting energy during the day in order to then transmit it at night. After a couple of moments of reflection, Lin Xin shouted loudly at the book, asking him if he could not tell about it right away. Then Lin Xin began viciously hitting the book on the grass, continuing to shout questions about what kind of demon clan and who this book is in general. Lin Xin growled in anger, telling the book to explain it to him right now. The book, meanwhile, turned blue with pain and began to sigh heavily asking Lin Zin to stop, since the book is going to tell the young man something, so he should listen carefully. As soon as Lin Zin calmed down, the book revealed that the demon emperor had passed away last winter. Races of humans and monsters raided the demon capital, and many demons were killed. In order to protect the demonic bloodline, the demon empress sealed 15 of the strongest beast maidens in the body of the book. The book was then sent to Earth in order to open a portal between two dimensions. The book also told that his task was to wait for the return of the reincarnated demon emperor. After that, the book informed Lin Zin that the young man should breed with these 15 beast maidens in order to revive the demon race. Lin Zin tensely squinted his eyes towards the book and clarified that he was the demon emperor, but the young man was being used as a male for mating, to which the book spread its pens to the sides and noticed that Lin Zin was too pessimistic. The book also noticed that all these beast maidens were carefully selected by the empress. Then the book grinned and in a completely unperturbed tone in his voice began to say that each of them is a new experience. The book also said that among these unusual maidens there are not only chickens, foxes and rabbits, but also tigers, bears, lizards. Lin Zin began to shout furiously, asking about who would have a favorable reaction to the lizard at all. Lin Zin then pushed the book aside and reminded that both humans and monsters consider demons to be the main problem. Lin Zin tensed, realizing that as soon as he showed them his face, these people and monsters would surely hack him to death. Summing up, Lin Zin shouted that it was dangerous, so he refused. Suddenly, the book began to speak in a creepy voice, informing Lin Zin that it was too late to give up the contract. A terrible black energy began to ooze out of the book when the book began to say that if Lin Zin refused to cooperate, then the book would allow them to eat Lin Zin. The young man held this book with a very trembling hand and asked him if the book was really the devil in the flesh. Scared and tense, Lin Zin, covering his face with his hand, reflected that he was sure that the beast maiden could easily finish him off. Lin Zin decided for himself that he must do everything that the book tells him in order to survive. Lin Zin also concluded for himself that the phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Qi looks good, so perhaps the young man will be calmer with her. Lin Zin then blushed deeply and looked away in embarrassment, thinking that he would have to work hard every night. Coming out of his thoughts, Lin Zin folded his hands in front of him and asked the book that. By the way, he said that Lin Zin absorbs energy all the time, but why then the young man does not feel anything? 
To which the book briefly replied that Lin Zin himself would see everything when he got into a fight. Hearing this, Lin Zin turned around in surprise and asked again about the fight. Literally at the same second, someone attacked Lin Zin, throwing his sharp sword at him. However, Lin Zin managed to dodge in time, and the sword stuck into the tree. The book, meanwhile, was smiling sweetly. Lin Zin looked in the direction of the attacker and saw the same Liu Da Dio, who is the son of the lord of the city, and next to him was a spiritual beast a tiger. Liu Da Dio grinned, asking Lin Zin again that he could dodge the attacks of the mayor's son. Chuckling, Liu Da Dio called Lin Zin a brat and said that he underestimated him. The tense servant behind smiled and called Lin Zin a little thief, asking about where the young man's beast was. After that, that servant ordered to show the spiritual beast to their young master. After looking around, Lin Zin immediately cursed loudly about the fact that the escaped henchmen had brought their master. At the same time, the cry of the phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Ki was heard, who directly from the book viciously called all these people bad and promised that if they touched her master Lin Zin, Jai Ki would incinerate them all. Then the book turned to Lin Zin and said that now the young man should fight this battle himself in order to feel his strength. To which Lin Zin shouted in fright in response that he had not won a single fight since childhood. Immediately, Liu Da Dio broke into a wide smile and gave the order to capture Lin Zin. At the same moment, a spiritual tiger beast attacked Lin Zin to the screams of Liu Da Dio, who told the young man to give him the phoenix beast Jai Ki. The servants, at this time, laughed loudly, calling Lin Zin a stupid commoner, and asked if the young man deserved such a spiritual beast. And one of these servants even called Lin Zin a kid and, laughing loudly, reported that the young man was now up to his ears in problems. Lin Zin, however, managed to step aside in time. Immediately after that, tacked the spiritual tiger with just her fist, simultaneously offering him a taste of it. The tiger flew far into the forest from such a powerful blow, breaking tree trunks along the way. Suddenly, a pink-haired girl came out of the thicket of the forest, who said that she had just seen how they were coming here. Sighing, this girl wondered why they suddenly disappeared. Lin Zin froze in surprise, looking at the same girl. Lin Zin gradually became aware of what power actually means. The book next to him smiled broadly and spread his hands to the sides, informing Lin Zin that this was the result of one hour of energy absorption. Suddenly, Lin Zin was attacked by venomous snakes, which immediately wrapped around his limbs. The servants holding these snakes with their hands moved away, pulling the snakes like ropes. It was the binding formation of the four-star serpent. Watching all this, the son of the lord of the city Liu Da Dio broke into a wide smile and asked little Lin Zin about who he thinks he is. Liu Da Dio then turned to his spiritual tiger beast and told him to grab Lin Zin. The spiritual beast was trembling with anger and irritation, growling towards Lin Zin and pounding its powerful paws on the ground. Liu Da Dio concentrated the bright pink energy in his fist and prepared to attack. A bright pink mana indicator also lit up on the spiritual tiger's forehead, and it growled loudly, preparing to attack. Hearing the command of his young master Liu Da Dio, the spiritual tiger immediately ran to attack, but suddenly stumbled while crossing the river. Liu Da Dio also stumbled after him, unaware of how slippery the rocks were on the river. In addition, Liu Da Dio lost his vigilance precisely because a pink-haired girl named Cheng Mayo Mayo, who is the daughter of the head of the hall called Martial Heart, loudly called Liu Da Dio by name. Seeing Cheng Mayo Mayo, Liu Da Dio immediately tensed up and asked about what this girl was doing here. Covered with drops of cold sweat, Liu Da Dio made an innocent expression on his face and clarified in a nervous voice to Cheng Mayo Mayo that she didn't know about his plans after all. To which the irritated Cheng Mayo Mayo made an angry expression on her face and clarified that Liu Da Dio was bullying her classmates again. Lin Xin himself, at this time, was watching Liu Da Dio and Cheng Mayo Mayo. Blushing, Lin Xin realized that this Cheng Mayo Mayo is Liu Da Dio's classmate and the object of Lin Xin's past size. The young man immediately wondered if Cheng Mayo Mayo had seen Liu Da Dio leading his men out of the city, and if Cheng Mayo Mayo had followed them. At this time, while the spiritual tiger happily waved his tail, rejoicing at Cheng Mayo Mayo, Liu Da Dio nervously continued to justify himself, saying that he did not do it. To which Cheng Mayo Mayo folded her hands in front of her and irritably asked Liu Da Dio about how a young man dares to lie to her. Then Cheng Mayo Mayo abruptly reported that she had seen it all with her own eyes. Then Cheng Mayo Mayo closed her eyes, continuing to stand in the same position, asked Liu Da Dio that the young man really wanted Cheng Mayo Mayo to tell his father about it. Hearing this, Liu Da Dio immediately fell to his knees, and his face was covered with drops of cold sweat as the young man began to shout loudly, assuring Cheng Mayo Mayo that he would not do this again, imagining how his father would beat with a whip. Liu Da Dio shouted that if his old man found out about this, he would punish the young man very cruelly for this act. Hearing this, Cheng Mayo Mayo opened her mouth in surprise and opened her eyes wide, asking if Lin Xin wasn't Liu Da Dio's classmate. 
deciding that it was necessary to get away from Chiang Mai Oh Mai Oh as soon as possible. Liu Da Dai oh began to talk about Lin Xin being a mudblood, so, of course, this Lin Xin is not his classmate. Chiang Mai Oh Mai Oh looked suspiciously at Liu Da Dai oh and immediately asked why Liu Da Dai oh was mocking Lin Xin. Immediately, a grinning Lin Xin got into the conversation, who said that Liu Da Dai oh was doing it all because he was not as good as Lin Xin himself. Casting a sly glance in the direction of Chiang Mai Oh Mai Oh, Lin Xin reported that Liu Da Dai oh was trying to harass Lin Xin in order to maintain authority. Lin Xin thought to himself that Chiang Mai Oh Mai Oh is the daughter of the head of the Martial Heart Hall. Therefore, with the help of Chiang Mai Oh Mai Oh, Lin Xin will be able to get there without any problems if they show themselves well. Lin Xin thought to himself that in the Martial Heart Hall he would be able to learn new cool self-defense techniques that would still be useful to Lin Xin. Hearing this, Liu Da Dai oh irritably started shouting a question about what Lin Xin had said. Liu Da Dai oh stuck out his index finger in front of him, shouting the question that he was not as good as Lin Xin. While Liu Da Dai oh was shouting and pointing at Lin Xin with his index finger, saying that he was much stronger than Lin Xin, his spiritual tiger also began to parody his master Liu Da Dai oh, viciously poking his paw towards Lin Xin and growling at the same time. A few moments later, Liu Da Dai oh and his tiger spirit beast were already running towards Lin Xin, intending to attack him. Liu Da Dai oh ran and shouted loudly, promising Lin Xin that he would beat him to death. Left behind, Cheng Mai Oh Mai oh shouted Liu Da Dai oh's name out of surprise. While Liu Da Dai oh was running towards Lin Xin, he was thinking to himself that the binding formation of the Four Star Serpent was created by Liu Da Dai oh's father, and even an expert of the Third Heaven of the Realm of Spiritual Elements would not be able to easily free himself from it. Liu Da Dai oh privately decided that Lin Xin had provoked him himself, so Liu Da Dai oh wouldn't do anything if he killed Lin Xin. The Spirit Tiger and Liu Da Dai oh were approaching Lin Xin at a fast speed. Liu Da Dai oh privately asked Lin Xin if the young man would be able to resist. Lin Xin, meanwhile, broke into a creepy and at the same time sly smile. A second later, everyone around heard the cries of Liu Da Dai oh's frightened and surprised servants. Lin Xin was smiling broadly as he controlled these snakes and made Liu Da Dai oh's servants fly in different directions. Lin Xin continued to smile, privately deciding that from this moment on, the young man begins his own path in the world of immortals. When Liu Da Dai oh and the spiritual tiger almost approached Lin Xin, the young man immediately grabbed their heads and pushed them together, forcing Liu Da Dai oh's master to kiss his spiritual tiger beast and even hold his paw. Seeing this, Cheng Mai Oh Mai oh opened her mouth in shock, and her eyes turned into bright stars. Cheng Mai Oh Mai oh was very surprised that Lin Xin was so strong. Lin Xin, on the other hand, joyfully realized that the road to the Hall of the Martial Heart was now open to him. After some time in Xinyang County, in the Martial Arts Hall, a man asked in a stern voice about Lin Xin defeating Liu Da Dai oh and Tiger alone. To which Cheng Mai Oh Mai oh replied to this man, her father, with firm agreement, simultaneously informing him that Lin Xin had never practiced martial arts before. Cheng Mai Oh Mai oh blushed, and her eyes turned into bright stars when the girl began to report that Lin Xin definitely had a natural talent. After that, Cheng Mai Oh Mai oh began to ask her father to take Lin Xin as a disciple. The father named Cheng Feng, who is the master of the hall called Martial Heart, chuckled and said that although Liu Da Dai oh is not a good character, but at least he is the son of the city lord, and his skills are quite good. Cheng Fei asked his daughter Cheng Mai Oh Mai oh about the fact that this boy Lin Xin really could defeat Liu Da Dai. Then Cheng Fei asked Cheng Mai Oh Mai oh about where Lin Xin was now. Cheng Fei announced that he would go and see what kind of talent Lin Xin had. To which Cheng Mai Oh Mai oh informed that Lin Xin was now in the training hall. Lin Xin, meanwhile, was sitting on the floor of the training hall, grinning and saying that with his immortal sacred body and a few more martial techniques, Lin Xin was confident that he could make a great career in this world. If only. While Lin Xin was dreaming, the book began to twitch violently. A few moments later, Jai Qi's loud cry rang out, informing her that she couldn't wait any longer. Immediately after these words, the phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Qi climbed out of the book and knocked Lin Xin to the floor. Lin Xin's eyes bulged in surprise and hit his head on the floor. The joyful phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Qi turned to her master Lin Xin and asked about whether they could now make each other feel good. Lin Xin was petrified with shock, wondering for what reason and how Jai Qi managed to get out of the book. About himself, the young man remembered the information that if the beast girl herself gets out of the book, then her strength decreases by exactly half. At this time, tormented and covered in cold sweat, the book was breathing heavily, telling Lin Xin that he was trying to hold Jai Qi with all his might. Then the book reported that the more power Lin Xin has, the stronger her attraction to the young man. The book nervously reported that it was just a book, not a stupid chest, so it could not be completely locked. The book screamed that he did his job as best he could. Summing up, the book in a trembling voice informed Lin Xin that the young man needed to abstain. 
Suddenly there was a crash and a loud trampling. The Lord of Shenyang County has come. This lord shouted a question about where is the bad man who injured his son Liu Dadaio. A man gasped in surprise, wondering if someone could really defeat Liu Dadaio. Another person asked about what kind of hero was able to do it. Embittered Liu Tiju, who is the ruler of Shenyang County, walked forward with loud steps and looked for the culprit of all this. People around Liu Tiju were whispering that Liu Dadaio's father, named Liu Tiju, thought that that person was in their Taoist sect. Another person whispered to ask who had crippled Liu Dadaio so badly. The third person said that it was impossible, because Liu Dadaio is one of the best in their Taoist school. Suddenly, Cheng Fei blocked Liu Tiju's path and, addressing him as Master Liu, informed him that this was the Hall of Learning and asked him to remember FR. Cheng Fei did not have time to finish, as Liu Tiju attacked him and angrily informed him that some boy, referring to Lin Xin, dared to beat his son Liu Dadaio. So this boy is finished. Liu Tiju growled sharply, informing that anyone who interferes with him will be killed. Cheng Fei managed to dodge, covering his daughter Cheng Mayo Mayo from the attack with his hand. Suddenly, a scream was heard asking someone to stop and stop undressing him. Hearing these screams, Cheng Fei and Liu Tiju turned around in surprise and froze. Cheng Mayo Mayo opened her mouth in shock and blushed deeply. The people around, as well as Cheng Mayo Mayo, Cheng Fei and Liu Tiju, stood shyly and tensely, looking at Lin Xin who had fallen out of the doors of the training hall. The awkward silence lasted for a few moments. Then Cheng Mayo Mayo shouted to her father that this was the same Lin Xin who defeated Liu Dadai. Covering his eyes with his palm, Liu Tiju began shouting to ask the young man that his name was Lin Xin. Liu Tiju turned to the young man Lin Xin and told him not to take off his trousers, simultaneously asking about what kind of disgrace it was. And then Liu Dadaio shouted to his father that it was the same Lin Xin who had beaten him. Liu Tiju pulled out one of the two green ornaments on his clothes out of shock. Seeing this, Cheng Fei ran in horror towards Liu Tiju, simultaneously shouting to him that the lord of the city should not do anything wrong. Cheng Fei tried to grab Liu Tiju by the arm, but did not have time. Liu Tiju shouted loudly at Cheng Fei, telling him to leave him alone, and then threw this ornament towards Lin Xin. The little ornament immediately turned into a four-star spiritual beast, namely, a leaf mantis. Seeing the leaf mantis, Lin Xin blushed with delight, and his eyes turned into stars when the young man began to remember some ash. Inwardly, Lin Xin wondered if the jade pendant that Liu Tiju was carrying with him could turn into a spiritual beast. Suddenly, a confident phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Qi appeared, who, walking on the back of her master Lin Xin, told the young man to rest, as Jai Qi would deal with this mantis herself. Seeing the phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Qi, the lord of Shenyang County Liu Tiju broke into a sly smile, wondering aloud that this boy Lin Xin really has a beast. Liu Tiju thought to himself that he had come to the right place. The crowd of people were noisily discussing the question of when this poor boy Lin Xin got a high-class beast. Liu Dadaio shouted that Jai Qi was an incredible beauty and that he wanted this beauty so much for himself. Cheng Fei and Cheng Mayo Mayo froze in shock. Liu Tiju grinned and loudly told the mantis to move forward. The leaf mantis flashed its bright green eyes and growled, about to attack Jai Qi. The phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Qi quickly dodged every attack of this leaf mantis. At one point, an irritated Jai Qi cursed, calling this leaf mantis and asking him about how this leaf mantis dares to ruin her clothes. Watching this, Lin Xin tensely turned to the book and asked him about what level Jai Qi was at and why she couldn't dodge the attacks of this leaf mantis. Lin Xin was intensely asking the book if Jai Qi was in danger, to which the book grinned and folded its handles into its sides, reporting that Jai Qi is considered one of the highest level beasts. But due to the fact that the Phoenix of Fiery Chaos Jai Qi was sealed for a long time, she lost her strength and is no longer as strong as before. The book summed up that somehow, Jai Qi is stronger than this leaf mantis, so Lin Xin cannot worry. At the same time, the irritated Phoenix of the Fiery Chaos Jai Qi turned to the leaf mantis as a small bug and offered to try something. Immediately after, Jai Qi attacked, releasing a powerful stream of fire from her mouth. However, the leaf mantis abruptly disappeared. Jai Qi, surprised, shouted a question about whether the leaf mantis had been recalled. However, Lin Xin suddenly approached Liu Tiju and sharply attacked him with his fist. Seeing this, Cheng Fei's eyes bulged in shock, wondering how Lin Xin managed to get ahead of Liu Tiju. Cheng Fei continued to wonder inwardly how this Lin Xin had such strength. The phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Qi immediately gasped and ran to her master Lin Xin, covered in dust. Lin Xin stood up and hugged the surprised Jai Qi to him, saying in a confident voice that Jai Qi was his and no one could take her away from Lin Xin. Hearing this, fire chaos phoenix Jai Qi blushed, and tears of joy welled up in her eyes as the beast maiden wondered if what Emperor Lin Xin had just said was a confession. 
Liu Tiju stood up and leveled himself, and then broke into a smile and spread his arms to the sides, saying that he usually does not kill weaklings, but Lin Xin has a high-class spiritual beast. Then Liu Tiju smiled even wider and told him to give him this beast, and then Liu Tiju would spare Lin Xin's life. Lin Xin privately concluded that the young man had only used 20% of his energy just now, so Lin Xin had 80% of his energy left against this Liu Tiju, so Jai Qi would be able to rest for a while. Lin Xin broke into a sly smile and beckoned with his index finger in his direction, rudely telling Liu Tiju to stop talking and try to take it away. The young man thought to himself that he wanted to see what Liu Tiju was capable of. At the same time, a worried Cheng Mai oh Mai oh began to shout to her father Cheng Fei, asking him to help. Cheng Mai oh Mai oh shouted that, after all, Mr. Liu Tiju has a cultivation base at the third level of the Heavenly Kingdom of Tianyuan. The excited Cheng Mai oh Mai oh noticed that no one but Cheng Fei himself could stop Liu Tiju in the entire Xinyang district, to which Cheng Fei told his daughter Cheng Mai oh Mai oh to shut up, as he thinks. Cheng Fei closed his eyes nervously, privately concluding that this Lin Xin had already done too many incredible things. Cheng Fei was thinking that Lin Xin could really. Suddenly, Cheng Fei heard Liu Tiju shouting, who was about to attack Lin Xin with heavenly thunder fists of destruction. Cheng Fei abruptly opened his eyes in shock and was covered in drops of cold sweat, shouting again about the heavenly thunder fists of destruction. People around in shock wondered that Liu Tiju had already reincarnated after seeing him covered with fiery energy. The evil Liu Tiju was grinning, informing Lin Xin that no one could dodge such a blow. Liu Tiju turned to the boy Lin Xin and reported that the young man was about to die. Liu Tiju growled with pleasure, saying that it was a great honor for Lin Xin to die at the hands of Liu Tiju. Cheng Fei was covered with streams of green mana and hurried to Liu Tiju shouting about whether Mr. Liu Tiju had gone mad. Cheng Fei broke into a scream, nervously asking Liu Tiju that he wanted to use this technique on a child, meaning Lin Xin. At the same moment, Liu Tiju moved from his place, intending to attack Lin Xin. Cheng Fei immediately hurried forward, trying to stop Liu Tiju and assuring him not to do so. Lin Xin, meanwhile, realized that Liu Tiju was moving so fast, and the young man would be able to dodge, but Jai Qi would suffer. Lin Xin decided that he couldn't let that happen, and then pushed the beast maiden Jai Qi aside with his hand. Liu Tiju concentrated his fire mana in his fist and almost attacked Lin Xin. The young man frowned at the bridge of his nose and concentrated on preparing for a counterattack. Dumbfounded, Jai Qi shouted to her master, asking him to take care. A few moments later, Liu Tiju flew back with a powerful blow. Sheng Fei froze dumbfounded, realizing that he did not have time to block Liu Tiju's attack and Lin Xin did it. A battered and dusty Lin Xin was sitting inside the ruined training hall among the rubble. A thin trickle of red liquid was flowing from Lin Xin's mouth. Embittered and annoyed, Liu Tiju clenched his fist and broke into a smile, loudly announcing that he and this guy named Lin Xin had met face to face. Liu Tiju wondered irritably that Lin Xin had managed to force Liu Tiju to retreat. Liu Tiju maliciously addressed the boy Lin Xin promising that Liu Tiju would not leave him so easily. The crowd of people, hearing this, froze in horror. Liu Dandaiyo grinned and began to encourage his father Liu Tiju, offering to teach Lin Xin a lesson. At this time, the worried phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Qi and Cheng Mayo Mayo ran towards Lin Xin, shouting his name. However, seeing the young man closer, Jai Qi and Cheng Mayo Mayo froze in surprise. Lin Xin sat quietly for a few moments, but then he began to examine his injuries. Lin Xin began to scream, as if cut, that he was in great pain and that his arm was dislocated. Suddenly, the phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Qi ran up to Lin Xin and hugged him sharply, simultaneously informing him that Mr. Lin Xin scared Jai Qi to death. Lin Xin froze from shock and turned very red and streams of bright red liquid sprayed from his nose. Seeing all this, Cheng Mai oh Mai oh froze and opened her mouth in shock, starting to blush more and more. Cheng Fei, at this time, could not hide his surprise, continuing to examine Lin Xin. Cheng Fei slowly clapped his hands, wondering to himself if this was a joke, because an ordinary person would have died long ago after such a powerful blow. Cheng Fei was increasingly surprised that under all these conditions Lin Xin was standing on his feet and flirting with the beauty Jai Qi. Then Cheng Fei squinted back and concluded that all the people present tensed up, because Lin Xin humiliated Mr. Liu Tiju, the most popular person in Shenyang County. Liu Tiju, at this time, viciously muttered you through his teeth, but after a second Liu Tiju blushed and laughed loudly, pointing at Lin Xin with his index finger and saying that the young man is a real talent. Then Liu Tiju began to roll with laughter and joy, holding a surprised young man next to him and saying that from now on Lin Xin can study hard in the Taoist sect. Liu Tiju turned to a guy named Lin Xin and informed him that he would pay for the young man's education and fees for him. After that, Liu Tiju turned to Master Cheng Fei and asked if he agreed, to which Cheng Fei hesitantly agreed and said that it was fine. Annoyed and humiliated, 
Liu Dadaio shouted to his father Liu Tiju, saying that he could not let Lin Xing go, because this young man had beaten Liu Dadaio, shouting loudly. Liu Dadaio asked his father if Liu Tiju would not punish Lin Xing, to which Liu Tiju kicked his son away with his foot and said irritably that he would think. He scratched his fists once. Liu Tiju told his son Liu Dadaio to close his mouth and not interfere. Finally, Liu Tiju waved goodbye with the words that he was leaving Lin Xin to Cheng Fei, so he should take care of the young man. Cheng Fei waved back excitedly, promising to do his best. Liu Tiju, with a broad smile on his face, turned to Master Cheng Fei and told him to come to him as soon as he had time. Uncertain, Cheng Mayo Mayo turned to her father and asked in surprise why Liu Tiju suddenly changed his mind. Cheng Mayo Mayo asked about the fact that, isn't Liu Tiju known for his cowardice? To which Cheng Fei made a serious expression on his face and reported that Lin Xin was able to gain the favor of the lord of the city Liu Tiju not only with the help of brute force, since Liu Tiju understands perfectly well that at this stage Lin Xin's presence is important for Shenyang County. At this time, Lin Xin was fooling around with Jai Qi, blushing and embarrassed. Lin Xin begged Jai Qi not to look at him like a wolf at a sheep. To which the surprised phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Qi asked about why. Because she had not done anything to Mr. Lin Xin yet. After some time in the study, in the living room, Cheng Fei and Lin Xin were drinking tea. Holding his mug in his hands, Cheng Fei asked Lin Xin if the young man wanted to tell him where he got this spiritual beast from. To which Lin Xin broke into a smile and said that this was too difficult a topic to talk about. So Lin Xin would refrain from answering. Cheng Fei smiled slightly and said that then he would mind his own business. Then Cheng Fei asked the young man if Lin Xin knew why Mr. Liu Tiju had suddenly changed his attitude towards himself today. To which the young man, with a slight excitement in his voice, said that it also seemed strange to him, and then Lin Xin suggested that Liu Tiju liked him. Cheng Fei sighed and refused, saying in a calm voice that Liu Tiju had said that he could not be friends with anyone other than Cheng Fei. Surprised, Lin Xin was immediately covered with drops of cold sweat. Cheng Fei immediately gasped and sweated himself, realizing that he had said it out loud. Then Cheng Fei began to make excuses and laugh, asking the young man not to take it to heart. Then Cheng Fei deftly changed the subject and slowly began to open the scroll with the words that Cheng Fei had called Lin Xin here to talk about the battle duel of the six counties. Opening a scroll with a map of Kangshan Prefecture, which depicted such counties as Gulin, Beimang, Guangcheng, Wu, Shenyang, Feiliu and the district of the Lord of Huanchen. Cheng Fei told that there are six counties in Kangshan Prefecture, and they all want to compete with each other in order to become famous. Cheng Fei also said that the most important event is the martial arts competitions of the 6th district, which are held every three years. Cheng Fei said that the contest will be held next month, but since Shenyang County has the smallest population, it has always been in last place, so the residents of Shenyang City did not have much hope of winning, but the appearance of Lin Xin gave them hope of winning this year. After listening to all this, Lin Xin arched his eyebrows in surprise and scratched his chin, realizing out loud that this is why Cheng Fei and the others want Lin Xin to participate in the tournament. Pouring tea into the mugs, Cheng Fei smiled broadly and said that this was the correct answer, and then added that a team of three people would represent their district in the competition. Cheng Fei noticed that if Lin Xin wins the tournament, he will be a great success. Cheng Fei addressed the guy, assuring him that the whole district would be proud of Lin Xin. However, Lin Xin did not fall for sweet talk and in a firm voice suggested to forget about fame and get down to business. After that, Lin Xin began to ask about what awaits him if the young man joins, and what benefits and rewards Lin Xin will receive. Upon hearing this, Cheng Fei immediately wiped the smile off his face, asking about the benefits and rewards. To himself, Cheng Fei concluded that it is not easy to deceive young people now. Then Cheng Fei smiled again, but this time nervously. Cheng Fei said he would talk to the city lord Liu Tiju and give Lin Xin an answer tomorrow. After some time, Lin Xin was walking down the street and talking to a book, who assured Lin Xin that even if the young man was not given anything, Lin Xin should participate, to which the young man told the book to stop trying to persuade him, since Cheng Fei just wants to make Lin Xin work for them. The book closed its eyes and spread its handles to the sides, saying that this is just a great way to improve your abilities on the battlefield. Lin Xin grinned and folded his hands in front of him, saying that it was not necessary to participate in the tournament. Lin Xin, with a smirk on his face, also said that he could also slowly increase his cultivation, and Lin Xin would not have to work on the abstinence of the demonic race. Hearing this, the book bared his teeth in anger, and then hit Lin Xin with his fist, saying that the young man should not infuriate him. Having destroyed the wall with his head, Lin Xin quietly reported that he was just joking. Embarrassed, Lin Xin shouted loudly, assuring Cheng Mayo Mayo that it was all just a misunderstanding. 
and the young man himself got here because of the book, and this book pushed him. Shang Mai Oh Mai Oh was trembling and looked at Lin Xin in shock with tears in her eyes. Lin Xin shyly covered his eyes with his hands, shouting that Chang Mai Oh Mai Oh has a very passionate character. Lin Xin then turned to God in shock, marveling at how big Chang Mai Oh Mai Oh's hips were. Annoyed and frightened, Chang Mai Oh Mai Oh shouted back that she could not believe that Lin Xin turned out to be such a shameless young man. At the same moment, a book appeared and, spreading his pens to the sides, informed the frightened and excited Lin Xin that he had completely forgotten to say that no one else sees the book except Lin Xin. To which Lin Xin loudly shouted a question about what nonsense the book was talking about. Shedding her tears, Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh covered her body with a towel and shouted loudly, asking Lin Xin about how he dared to break into her. Then Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh turned to a four-star octopus beast named Baby Zio Wu and told her to catch the pervert. Annoyed, little Zio Wu sighed heavily and released frosty air towards Lin Xin. Moments later, Lin Xin broke out of the ice block created by little Zio Wu and shouted loudly to his phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Qi that they needed to find shelter. To which Jai Qi replied to her master Lin Xin with a firm agreement. Moments later, shivering from the cold and still covered in ice, Lin Xin was sitting by the trunk of a tree. Lin Xin was shivering from the cold and shouted that it was too cruel. Lin Xin privately concluded that if it wasn't for the fiery chaos phoenix Jai Qi, Lin Xin would have already been frozen alive. After seeing Lin Xin trembling, Jai Qi immediately blushed and made the most flirtatious expression possible. Looking away from her flirtatious gaze, Jai Qi said in a sweet voice that her master Lin Xin was cold, and Jai Qi herself would really like to warm the young man now. Lin Xin immediately became covered with drops of cold sweat and began to brush off the words of the beast girl. With a nervous smile on his face, informing that he had already warmed up, Jai Qi climbed up to Lin Xin again. And immediately an angry and irritated Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh appeared in just a towel, shouting that this pervert Lin Xin did not run away. As soon as little Zai Oh Wu tried to attack with his frosty air again, the flirtatious phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Qi immediately blocked every attack of the spiritual octopus Zai Oh Wu with her fire. Lin Xin was wailing at this moment that he had just accidentally seen Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh naked. The young man nervously asked Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh that she was sorry or something. Having finished blocking the attack, Jai Qi turned around and immediately turned to her master Lin Xin, informing the young man that if he wanted to look at the beauties and negligee, then Lin Xin had only to say, and Jai Qi would arrange everything. At this time, little Zio Wu attacked again, and the frightened Jai Qi automatically blocked his attack. Lin Xin nervously replied Jai Qi, saying that now is not the time to talk about it. The last attack, which Jai Qi did not notice, Lin Xin blocked himself. After a few moments, Lin Xin looked at his trembling hand and shouted loudly about how cold he was. A blushing and joyful phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Qi informed her master Lin Xin that this was the second time that a young man had saved her. Jai Qi confusedly asked Lin Xin about how she could still pay for her master's kindness, other than giving him her body. At the same time, an irritated Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh shouted that she had underestimated Lin Xin. But now this sweet girl will correct her mistake. There was a pile of snow next to Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh, which was left as a consequence of Lin Xin's last attack. In addition, there was not only snow on the floor, but also ice. Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh didn't notice it and immediately slipped, starting to blush more and more. Lin Xin looked at this view with his eyes wide open, remembering the sunflower character from some cartoon that said it was so fresh outside. However, suddenly embarrassed with shame, Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh fell to her knees and, covering her body with her towel, began to shed tears from her eyes again, asking the young man in a trembling nervous voice that he had seen everything. Lin Xin tried to pretend to be a fool and cover his eyes, telling Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh that he had not seen anything. Embarrassedly scratching his head with his hand, Lin Xin informed Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh that, in truth, he had problems with his eyesight. Hearing this, the angry Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh immediately got to her feet and attacked her opponent with ice again, saying that Lin Xin was lying. Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh then suggested that little Zio Wu attack Lin Xin together. After seeing Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh's attack, Lin Xin became very nervous, privately wondering if Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh really had the attribute of water. Lin Xin frowned at the bridge of his nose and grinned with tension, realizing to himself that if Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh attacked with the ice octopus, he could kill Jai Qi and Lin Xin. Suddenly, a loud shout was heard, telling Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh to stop. The phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Qi froze in surprise and pursed her lips. Lin Xin opened his mouth in shock, and Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh froze in surprise. Suddenly appearing on the roof, Cheng Fei began to viciously shout at Nai Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh about what this girl was doing and was she really trying to destroy the school. To which Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh, with bitter tears in her eyes, began pointing her index finger towards Lin Xin, simultaneously reporting to her father Cheng Fei that this Lin Xin is a pervert, so they can't leave him. 
Cheng Fei abruptly jumped off the roof and firmly reported that he had seen everything. So his daughter Cheng Mayo Mayo did not need to worry, as Cheng Fei would deal with Lin Xin fairly. After these words, Cheng Fei firmly told Cheng Mayo Mayo to return to the house and change clothes. Cheng Mayo Mayo immediately ran into the house with baby Xiao Wu. When Cheng Mayo Mayo left, Cheng Fei abruptly pulled his eyebrows to the bridge of his nose and addressed Lin Xin by name in a stern voice, asking the young man if he had anything to say. Lin Xin frowned at the bridge of his nose and shyly lowered his gaze, slowly saying that once Cheng Fei saw everything. Suddenly Lin Xin stopped talking and froze for a moment, frowning his eyebrows even more. Lin Xin began to wonder that Cheng Fei had seen everything, and was this Cheng Fei watching all this from the roof of the building? Covered with drops of cold sweat, Lin Xin concluded for himself that all this means is that Cheng Fei took advantage of this situation and turned it to his advantage. After some time in the meeting room, a blushing Cheng Fei with a wide smile on his face clapped his hands like a madman. Cheng Fei reported that after careful overnight negotiations, Lin Xin realized his mistake, and now the young man is ready to represent their Shenyang County in the competition. Finally, Cheng Fei announced that there was less than a month left before the competition. Opposite Cheng Fei, Cheng Mayo Mayo and Lin Xin were sitting irritated and dissatisfied, thinking to themselves that Cheng Fei was an old stump. Lin Xin thought so because of the night negotiations, but Cheng Mayo Mayo was unhappy that she overslept everything. Satisfied beyond belief, Cheng Fei continued to tell young Cheng Mayo Mayo and Lin Xin that the two of them should work hard in order to improve their skills. Lin Xin looked wearily at Cheng Fei and asked about that. By the way, didn't this Cheng Fei say that they needed a team of three people? Lin Xin was interested in who would be the third participant. Cheng Fei smiled broadly and waved in the direction of the third participant, who turned out to be too cheerful Liu Dana. Laughing loudly, Liu Da Daio pointed his index finger at Lin Xin and loudly said that Lin Xin was lucky to be alive. Continuing to laugh loudly, Liu Da Daio shouted that if Lin Xin was on his team, then the young man was finished. Lin Xin sighed heavily, thinking to himself that how could he not have guessed this before. Cheng Fei walked up to Liu Da Daio and put his palm on his shoulder, with a wide smile informing him that Lin Xin would be the team captain this year. Upon hearing this, Lin Xin immediately broke into a satisfied smile and said that it seemed like it was time to train Liu Da Daio properly. Liu Da Daio began to shout loudly and discontentedly questions about why it was Lin Xin and not him. Liu Da Daio reminded Cheng Fei that he had been captain for three years in a row. Summing up, Liu Da Daio promised that he would tell his father Liu Tiju everything. Cheng Fei immediately pulled Liu Da Daio closer to him and asked the young man if Liu Da Daio had forgotten how his father treated him yesterday. Liu Da Daio turned blue with horror and bulged his eyes when he heard Cheng Fei's words that he thought that the lord of the city Liu Tiju would also support Cheng Fei. Suddenly annoyed, Cheng Mayo Mayo began shouting at Liu Da Daio about the fact that the young man had been captain for three years in a row, so he should keep quiet. Cheng Mayo Mayo firmly informed that if Liu Da Daio agreed, then he could stay. However, if Liu Da Daio doesn't agree, then he should get out. Liu Da Daio excitedly looked at Cheng Mayo Mayo and laughed nervously, informing Cheng Mayo Mayo that he had just clarified, so she didn't need to be so angry. Lin Xin spread his hands to the sides and in a calm voice said that he didn't care, so let Liu Da Daio be the captain. Upon hearing this, Cheng Mayo Mayo growled with overflowing anger, and then began shouting at Lin Xin, telling the young man to close his mouth too. Continuing to shout angrily, Cheng Mayo Mayo informed and warned Lin Xin that if the young man made a fool of himself at the competition, Cheng Mayo Mayo would tear him to pieces. Lin Xin listened to the girl in silence and very surprised, without making a sound. A few moments later, Cheng Mayo Mayo left the hall and went outside very angry. Following Cheng Mayo Mayo with his eyes, Liu Da Daio smiled and reminded Lin Xin that yesterday Cheng Mayo Mayo was protecting a young man, and today she wants to tear Lin Xin to pieces. Liu Da Daio not hiding his curiosity, asked about what was the matter. Liu Da Daio was very interested in what this guy named Lin Xin did to Cheng Mai Oh Mai. Lin Xin scratched his head with his hand and reported that it was nothing. Then, without really expressing a single emotion, Lin Xin reported that he saw Cheng Mai Oh Mai oh without clothes in the shower last night, and Cheng Mai Oh Mai oh therefore hated the young man. Hearing this and imagining that picture, Liu Da Daio froze, and drops of salty tears splashed out of his eyes. Liu Da Daio thought to himself that he did not know exactly what happened that night, but for some reason tears themselves flow down Liu Da Daio's face. Suddenly, Cheng Fei, smiling and happy as a boa constrictor, got into the conversation, who put his index finger up and informed Liu Da Daio and Lin Xin that the young people needed to prepare for battle, so they should go and collect herbs on the Big Bear Mountain outside the city. Cheng Fei also suggested that Liu Da Daio and Lin Xin prepare some pills together, as it might bring their team closer together. After some time, Cheng Mayo Mayo, Liu Da Daio and Lin Xin were already walking on the very top of the Great Bear Mountain. 
Lin Xin walked behind everyone and watched Liu Da Dio non-stop telling Chang Mai Oh Mai Oh what he had heard about bears being especially aggressive these days. However, Liu Da Dio believed Cheng Mai Oh Mai that she should not worry, as he would protect her, noticing that his tiger had risen to the three-star level last night. Cheng Mai Oh Mai with a cold intonation in her voice, reported that there was no need to protect her. Once at the fork in the road, Liu Da Dio grinned and turned to Lin Xin, informing him that they would go to collect herbs in the right direction and let Lin Xin go to the left, to which Lin Xin replied with a short agreement, walking up to a tree with signposts one of which said that rare herbs were located around the top of the mountain. Lin Xin chuckled, saying out loud that he still could not believe that Liu Da Dio was still sucking up to Chang Mai Oh Mai oh. Lin Xin talked about what a pity it was. Hearing this, Liu Da Dio growled in displeasure that he was not a sycophant, and Lin Xin would answer for these words later. A smiling book immediately appeared and asked Lin Xin about whether the young man wanted to try the imperial tonic. Then the book informed that now is the time to lay the foundations of their cultivation. The book suggested that Lin Xin try to make that tonic, noting that it is very useful. Lin Xin agreed and immediately blew up from his seat with the words that he would go find all the necessary herbs. After some time, the book explained that since Big Bear Mountain is a place of abundance of spiritual energy, all kinds of rare herbs can be found there. On the grass were ingredients such as fire cherry, emerald flower, long-lasting grass, dragon bamboo shoots, fruit of eternal beauty, bananas of skill, fruit purifying the heart and spring fire leaf. While Lin Xin was sitting on the ground and forming his bright aura by mixing with all sorts of herbs, the book continued to say that the aura obtained as a result of the fusion of herbs is slowly absorbed into the body. Lin Xin grunted in concentration, and then abruptly spat out clumps of red liquid from his mouth. Lin Xin began to shout a question about what kind of nonsense it was. Closing his eyes, Lin Xin reported that he was hot and his chest was burning. The book was suddenly covered with drops of cold sweat and screamed that he had made a mistake. The book went on to explain that while Lin Xin absorbs the energy of herbs, his body continues to absorb the energy of heaven and earth. Summing up, the book screamed in panic that Lin Xin's body could not hold so much energy for a long time, as it simply would not be able to curb it. Lin Xin, meanwhile, was in agony, thinking to himself that his body was so weak and he felt so pathetic. Releasing the fire from his mouth, Lin Xin growled in pain, asking the book to do something, as he was about to explode. The book immediately reported that there is only one way to fix it. Immediately after that, Jai Ki released the book and told her that the time had come. Jai Ki smiled and, with burning eyes, announced that she understood everything. Then the phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Ki called Mr. Lin Xin, who was in agony, and asked him to be gentle with her. Lin Xin froze in surprise and did not have time to react properly, as Jai Ki had already attacked the young man with hugs, simultaneously informing him that she had been waiting for this for thousands of years. Jai Ki thought about the situation where she and another beast maiden were arguing about who would take on the emperor first, approaching Lin Xin with joy that it had finally happened. Jai Ki began to sort through something golden, wondering why Lin Xin's dragon rod had not yet been cleaned. Jai Ki then suggested that it should be revealed, slowly opening Lin Xin's dragon rod. Jai Ki felt something hot and pleasant. At this time, seeing some rainbow streams in the distance, Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh became worried and asked out loud that Lin Xin had found some exotic grass because a ray of light appeared so suddenly. Liu Da Dai Oh wondered how strong the grass must be in order to emit such light, because it shimmers with all the colors of the rainbow. Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh said emphatically that they needed to go check on Lin Xin as this light might attract wild animals. Will they really catch this scene? A double cultivation scene. Lin Xin caught Jai Ki's hand and asked in surprise what was wrong with her, to which Jai Ki, blushing, asked Mr. Lin Xin not to ask questions. Jai Ki then firmly announced that the next time she came, the phoenix of fiery chaos Jai Ki would make it so that Lin Xin would not be able to get up next time. Summing up, Jai Ki closed her eyes and, starting to disperse, announced that she would rest for a while. Lin Xin froze in surprise. And then, seeing a small red ball in his hands, asked in horror that Jai Ki had turned into a pebble, to which the calm book told Lin Xin not to be surprised, since the young man had already signed a contract with Jai Ki. Then the book announced that in the future Lin Xin would be able to summon Jai Ki with the summoning stone of a spiritual beast, as Liu Tiju did. The book noticed that this would give Lin Xin an advantage. Feeling something, Lin Xin froze for a while. Then Lin Xin abruptly jumped off the cliff. The book also asked the young man about what he was doing. To which Lin Xin briefly replied that someone was coming. When Lin Xin was hiding in the gap, the book assumed that it was Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh and the others, to which the tense Lin Xin firmly replied that it wasn't them. After looking around, the book breathed a sigh of relief, saying how good it is that there is a ledge here. Lin Xin was standing on the cliff right on his toes, due to the fact that the cliff bulges out, forming a support. The man who came up looked around and said that it was strange. The book and Lin Xin waited tensely, 
The man standing on the edge of the cliff was thinking out loud that Lin Zin's aura had suddenly disappeared. The man suggested that maybe Lin Zin sensed his approach and ran away. The man wondered what kind of animal could have such a keen sense. Listening to all this, Lin Zin began to be covered with drops of cold sweat due to the tension. The same man, Yang Mao from Huawu County, put his hands in his pockets and assumed that the aura was so strong, so it could not be a beast. Yang Mao concluded that whoever it was must have found the best spiritual herb. Suddenly, Yang Mao felt movement from behind and turned around sharply. Then Yang Mao immediately sharply attacked the bush with his fire attack, telling that person to come out. The bush exploded abruptly and Liu Dadao and Chang Mayo Mayo fell out of it in different directions. Yang Mao chuckled and asked those guys that they were probably wondering who this man was. Yang Mao then firmly announced that he was the future star of Shenyang County. Lin Xin, at this time, pulled himself back slightly and carefully watched Yang Mao, Cheng Mayo Mayo and Liu Dadao, wondering that they were here. Chuckling, Yang Mao assumed that this meant that they had found the best grass. Suddenly, Cheng Mayo Mayo leveled off and addressed Yang Mao in a stern voice asking the young man about how he dared to come to the Great Bear Mountain. Knitting her eyebrows to the bridge of her nose, Cheng Mayo Mayo firmly announced that the Lord of the Mountain forbade the theft of resources. Liu Da Dao, at that time, turned blue with horror, irritably wondering what else is the best grass. Liu Da Dao noticed that they had actually just arrived. Cheng Mayo Mayo wondered inwardly where Lin Xin was. Lin Xin himself, at this time, continuing to hide, frowned at the bridge of his nose and pursed his lips, thinking to himself that he was sure that Yang Mao was a real thief since he had come to someone else's territory and was stealing resources. Yang Mao cursed inwardly, realizing that he was now on the verge of death. Frowning his eyebrows, Yang Mao reported that he was just thinking about looking for something interesting, and did not notice that the two of them were also here. Smiling slightly, Yang Mao went on to say that now that he was caught, Yang Mao would have to silence Cheng Mayo Mayo and Liu Da Dao forever. Immediately after these words, Yang Mao threw two green stones with spiritual beasts towards Cheng Mayo Mayo and Liu Da Dao. From these pebbles, a sturdy hedgehog with four stars and a fiery sparrow with five stars instantly appeared. Watching these spiritual beasts, Lin Zin arched his eyebrows strangely, thinking that this was the first time he had seen two spiritual beasts fighting at the same time. Lin Zin decided for himself that he also had to learn this. Lin Zin thought about the fact that he started training carelessly for the first time. However, Lin Zin wants to improve quickly and do it again. Annoyed, Liu Da Dao threw his stone with a spiritual tiger, shouting that they had tried to rob the young man and beat him. Liu Da Dao summed up that he hates such trash people. Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh clenched her fists and released her baby Zai Oh Wu, simultaneously asking Liu Da Dao not to treat Yang Mao lightly, since he is a legendary genius who took part in three martial arts competitions. Then Cheng Mai Oh Mai Oh turned to her octopus Zai Oh Wu asking the baby to use his attribute in order to deal with the bird first. After that, Cheng Mayo Mayo turned to Liu Da Dao and told him to tell his tiger to detain the hedgehog. Liu Da Dao happily smiled and agreed. Looking at all this, Yang Mao broke into a creepy smile and said how stupid it was. At the same second, the fiery sparrow attacked a strong hedgehog with a powerful fuse of his fire. Seeing all this, Lin Xin, Cheng Mayo Mayo and Liu Da Dao froze, surprised that the spiritual beast attacked in its own way. At the same time, the man reported to the girl that Yang Mao was out of town. That girl chuckled and asked about this guy Yang Mao causing trouble again. 